Are you feeling curious? Interesting. Today on Curious Crew, we have some interesting investigations planned. Three, let go! We'll spin a full cup of water without letting it spill. Oh. Oh. And drop several objects, including cups of water and eggs on the pavement. In other words, we're going to explore gravity. Production of Curious Crew is made possible in part by a grant from Michigan STEM Partnership providing strategic support for the effectiveness and sustainability of STEM education. By the Roland M. Gerstacker Foundation, celebrating over 50 years of giving to worthy causes that make communities strong and vibrant. Curious Crew is supported by TechSmith Corporation, a software company specializing in sharing knowledge visually through screen capture and screen recording. TechSmith products are used by teachers to create digital learning content and by students to demonstrate their knowledge digitally. Information is available at techsmith.com edu. By Fifth Third Bank, the Curious Bank, creating innovative solutions that can help improve the lives and well-being of our community. Information about Fifth Third Bank at 53.com. Additional support is provided by Impression 5 Science Center, an interactive space for families to play, create, and challenge their understanding of science. Curious Crew, I'm Rob Stevenson. I'm hanging out with some of my favorite people, my crew members right here, and we are standing outside of Impression 5 Science Center in downtown Lansing on a gorgeous day. We got a beautiful day to try something outside, didn't we? Yep. Yes. Now this activity is really something you want to try outside. I would encourage you to try it with a pail of water and make sure your pail has a really good sturdy handle. But I'm going to be doing this with a little cup. Got a little cup of water. Notice a cup of water? Yeah. Anybody thirsty? Yes. I'm not going to let you drink it. Sorry, Autumn. <laughs> I am going to place this cup of water right on my little platform. Now my little platform has three little strings that go up to a little washer, then goes up to this little button. And you're going to see why in just a minute, why we need to do this outside. The beginning of every show, I like to start with a little discrepant event. Because a discrepant event stimulates curiosity. That's what it stimulates. And you'll see why in just a minute. I'm going to take a step forward and you guys keep a close eye on the cup and the water. I'm going to do something that seems a little foolish. I'm going to swing this back and forth and notice it is not spilling. Now I'm going to try to get some momentum going and I'm going to go all the way around in a big 360. Whoa! Check that out. It is so cool. You got to stick around so we can figure out how this works. But See if one of my crew members can figure out what we're going to be talking about today. If I were to drop this cup, what would happen, you guys? It would fall. Yeah, hit the fall, hit the ground, spill, make a mess, something falling. What do you think we're going to be talking about today? Gravity! Gravity is what we're talking about. Stick around. You'll get to see how this works. Everything in the universe with mass pulls on every object that has mass. And this is referred to as gravity. It may surprise you to know that you have gravity, but things don't fall toward us, do they? That's because the Earth has a lot more mass than we do, which pulls everything towards it. The bigger the mass, the bigger the gravity. So when you're talking about gravity, we talk about things falling down, right? <laughs> of course we do. Now I've got a book. This is a special book. This book is designed to fall down on the floor. And this book is called Everything You Ever Wondered About Gravity But Were Afraid to Ask, AKA What Goes Up Must Come Down. And it's written by Am I Heavy. <laughs> okay, now you'll notice if I let go of this book, what happens? That's what happens, it falls down, correct? Okay, now what would happen if I asked Rosie to let go of this piece of paper and let it fall down? What happens? We get a little flutter action going on, don't we? Okay, so here's an interesting little test. I'm going to ask you to hold the book. I'm gonna ask you to hold this really interesting bookmark, and I'm gonna ask you to hold a piece of paper, and I want you to get real tight together and hold it about the same height off the ground, and we're gonna let them go on the count of three. Are you ready? One, two, three, let go! Okay, now did that do what you thought it was gonna happen? Did the, what did you think was gonna happen? No, no, kind of, yes, no. Did you think the book was gonna hit first or no? You did, okay, pick them up, pick them up, pick them up, pick them up. We gotta try this again, because most people will agree that the paper's gonna go slower. Why? Because it's 
lighter. It's lighter. Okay. Any other ideas? Um, Drop yours one more time, Rosie, and I want you to think, what's slowing it down? The air is slowing it down, right? Air is slowing that down. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Do you know I can actually drop this bookmark and this book at the same speed? Can you hold this for just one second? Now, if I were to hold them like this and let them go, we've seen that it appears as though Liam's book goes a little bit faster. But watch closely. I'm just going to place the bookmark right on top, just right on top. Watch what happens to the bookmark. It travels right with the book. In fact, if I put it underneath, it'll travel right with the book. Now, you might be thinking, OK, it's pushing the air out of the way. That makes sense. But let's grab this piece of paper and let's change its shape. Let's make it so it can't catch so much air, OK? And now let's see what happens when we hold these to the same height and let them both go. Did you notice they travel together? Yeah. OK, now this is where it gets interesting. We know that what goes up must come down, right? But did you know? that everything on Earth is going to be pulled down with the same force, which means things fall at the same speed, even if they're heavy or if they're light. Air sort of gets in the way sometimes, doesn't it? Yeah, and slows things down. You know, it's kind of funny. If we were on the moon and there's no air, I could drop a feather and a hammer from the same height, and the feather would hit the ground the same time as the hammer. Isn't that crazy? Amazing thing about gravity, everything is pulled down with the same force, and it is an equal rate of speed. One more time. One, two, three, let her go. Yeah. Woohoo! What goes up must come down, right? That's it. It seems strange that things fall at the same speed. But because we have air on Earth, lighter things, like a piece of paper, fall more gently. In 1971, an astronaut, while on the moon, dropped a hammer and a feather and they fell at the same speed. With no air on the moon to slow down the feather, we could see that gravity pulls things down at the same rate, no matter how heavy they are. So we have another little fun experiment to try outside. We have some styrofoam cups, and we put some water in there, and you'll notice we poked some holes in the styrofoam cups. Now my question for the crew is this. Obviously, if I move my finger, the water falls out, right? If I remove my finger and let the whole thing fall, will the water come out? Probably. What? Probably? No. Yes, no? The cup's falling with the water. Let's find out. I'm gonna drop mine first, and then Charlie will drop his. And of course, this can happen only once because I'm gonna destroy the cup. Here we go. I'm gonna let go, and I'm gonna drop it. Oh! oh! Did you see water come out? Did you? Let's watch yours. Remove your finger, straight arm out, straight arm out. Remove your finger. Oh, interesting. Remove your finger, straight arm out, straight arm out. Oh, you turned yourself, you silly guy. Straight arm out. Oh, that was an excellent example. Did you see water come out of that? Water did not come out of the hole. And do you know why? Charlie, you said something a moment ago. Um, the, cup's falling with the, water? the cup and the water are both falling together and gravity pulls things down at the same speed. And so before, when we held it up here and we let the water come out, the cup couldn't fall. Gravity could only pull on the water. So the water fell out. Once we let it go, they all fall together. Gravity pulls everything down at the same speed. Isn't that amazing? Really cool. Have you ever seen pictures of an astronaut floating in space? It may surprise you to learn that she is actually falling, not floating. It's true. Both she and the ship are falling in a curved path around the Earth, an orbit. Just like if we were to jump off something really tall, we would feel weightless while we were falling. Amazing. STEM Challenge. So we've been having fun today talking about what, guys? Gravity! That's right, gravity, and we know what goes up must come down, right? Well, I'm giving the team here a little difficult challenge, a little fun challenge, dealing with a raw egg. I laid an egg, you guys. Now, what they're going to have to do is they need to design and build a system that will protect this egg when dropped from an eight-foot ladder. Dun, dun, dun. OK. Now, guys, I hate to break it to you, no parachutes allowed. Sorry, no parachutes allowed. For this, it's pure impact. 
pure gravity impact to see if their eggs can survive their prototypes. You guys ready to build? I gotta let them in on one little secret. I charge them for every single item that they're using. So at the end, we're gonna find out what their prototypes cost. Let's get going, guys. Build away. This is a fun family challenge. Try having family members design protective devices for an egg and then drop them out in the driveway. Now, try to predict which of the cruise designs may survive the fall. Do they have something in common? And what other materials could help absorb the shock of the impact? If you don't have an egg, you can always substitute it with a small water balloon in your experiment. Good luck. Okay, so it looks like our prototypes are ready to test. We're gonna be going outside. I'm gonna climb up on an eight foot ladder and we're gonna drop off each one of these and see how they do. Now the interesting thing is, every item that the kids used in their prototype today, I charged you for, didn't I? Yeah, I charged you for. And I have a surprise for this group that used a lot of tape because our supplier has suddenly upped the cost of tape, which is gonna add a cost to each of your prototypes. But we'll see how they fare. We're going outside. You guys ready? Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about, good job. Okay, so we're outside in Pressure 5 Science Center and it's time to drop some eggs. And I think I wanna start with Amelia. I want your team first. Okay, lovely design here. Take a look, three, two, one. Ooh, it sounded good, it sounded good. Go ahead, Liam, you can grab that real quick. And Rosie's giving me the second one from your team. Here we go, and three, two, one. Ooh, that was an interesting sound. I wanna go over to this team real quick. All right, Ileana. And I know I'm supposed to drop this one this way, right? Okay, dropping it this way. Here we go. Ooh, nice little bounce. Okay, Jacob, you can go ahead and grab that one for me. Thanks, Autumn. All right, I'm hoping this one doesn't pop. Ooh, you got a good bounce. Okay, going over to this group. Let me have Brenda, let me have yours. Yes, our tape. Our tape container, here we go. Three, two, one, and nice, nice bounce on that one. Thanks, Bethany. And Charlie, let me have that one. Okay, our final drop. Three, two, one. Ooh! Now, of course, we're gonna have to open them to see if the eggs survive. So we're back inside, and now we get to see if our eggs survive those drops, right? We've just opened them up. And interesting thing, each one of our teams had one success and one failing prototype. And even more amazingly, all of our cheap prototypes failed. So let's take a look at our expensive prototypes. We're gonna start over here with this group and show us your expensive prototype that worked. Look at that. You ended up using, what, a tennis ball inside there? Tennis ball, we stuck the egg inside a cracked tennis ball. Nice job. And you guys went a little over the top with tape, but it was very successful. We can see right here, right, Bethany, you hold that. Oh yeah, that one did not survive. That's what happens with cheap prototypes. We'll take a look at these two over here. We had another cheap prototype right there, which was a, an abysmal failure, right? Okay, Amelia, why don't you do a quick reveal of your styrofoam. Oh, isn't that beautiful? A little nest egg, so to speak. And we've got one over here, obviously oozing out all over the place <laughs> with our airbags that were a complete failure. And yet, this one was an interesting design. Okay, so, yeah. yeah, it's got a cup and a spring on the bottom, so it bounced. Yeah. It's like... Lots of cotton balls in and there. The egg is somewhere in here. <laughs> the egg is right there, survived. So the teams were thinking about shock absorbing impact. Obviously, gravity is a powerful thing, isn't it? And we now have some pretty good ideas on how to drop an egg and protect it. Well done, my friends.
Did you know that in 2004, the United States successfully landed two rovers on the planet Mars? They were named Opportunity and Spirit, and scientists had them dropped onto the planet's surface in giant airbags. Both rovers were fine, and it provided incredible information about the planet Mars. Just think of those rovers like really giant expensive eggs. <laughs>
<laughs> what, do, what do you notice there, buddy? Which one? Like yeah, by a lot, isn't it? Okay, nice job. Let's let these guys feel this and compare. Now, let's think about why. <laughs> let's think about why that's so. Well, Jupiter is a bigger planet, right? Yeah. If it's a bigger planet, <laughs> if it's a bigger planet, it's gonna pull down harder. Okay, we have to do another comparison because this one just cracks me up. Um, Rosie, can you grab Pluto for just a second? Now, notice Pluto. How many pennies did we put in there, guys? Zero. <laughs> none. We put none in there. We're pretending this is a full can. Rosie, compare those two, and what do you notice? Oh, boy. A full can on Pluto would feel like nothing, right? So your 85 pounds on Earth would not be 85 pounds on Pluto. In fact, you'd probably be down at about six pounds, only pulled down. Now, that's weird, though, because you're still the same size, aren't you? Yeah. Our mass doesn't change, but how hard our mass gets pulled down does change. So let's put those down for just one second, and I want you guys to be lifting and doing some comparisons yourself. Pick up a couple and see how those compare. Now, when you think about mass and you think about weight, obviously, the bigger the planet, the harder we're pulled down. But here's something strange. Jupiter is way more massive than Earth. 318 times more massive than Earth. But fortunately, we don't weigh 318 times more. And that's because Jupiter is so big, it's so far away from the center of the planet to the outside of the planet, that it weakens that gravitational pull. So it only feels about two and a half times bigger. But you know what? Unfortunately, I would weigh about 472 pounds on Jupiter. Now that's kind of scary, isn't it? It's pretty fascinating. Get some pennies, get some cans, and you can start figuring out the differences in how each planet pulls things down. Pretty cool stuff. It seems funny to think that we would weigh different amounts on different planets, even though our mass is the same. So if you weigh 60 pounds on Earth, you would weigh nearly 142 pounds on Jupiter. That is, if we could stand on it. And you would only weigh four pounds on Pluto. Just think how high you could jump. Our weight depends on the size and mass of the planet we're standing on. I think Earth is just right. So now we get to discover how our cool discrepant event works, right? All day we've been dropping things and talking about gravity, right? Uh, it's too much fun. Okay, but when we started the show, of course, we put this cup on here and it didn't fall off, even though we know it should. And we were talking about some forces. Jacob, what was that force called? Centripetal force. Centripetal force is exactly right. Now, centripetal force, that's what keeps us in the solar system, the Earth going around the sun, the moon going around the Earth. Now, let's explain it a little bit further. When we swing this back and forth, we know that cup is being pulled down to the Earth, right? But I also have the string that's pulling it back towards my hand. And that force is gonna be a little stronger than the pound of force that's being pulled down by the Earth. And we're gonna create our own false gravity. And when we do that, the cup stays put. Now, what would happen, guys, if while I was swinging this, I let go of the string? It would fly off in a straight line. That's called inertia, right? Now suddenly, if our moon, imagine this, if our moon started picking up speed, it could actually slingshot right away from the Earth. Wouldn't that be awful? That'd <laughs> be terrible. Now we don't want that to happen. So when we have centripetal force, we have a balance of a straight line motion with a falling down gravity action, and we end up with a constant orbit. I created the false gravity with the string, and of course we could see that centripetal force in action. You gotta love it. Isn't that cool? Try this one outside. A pail of water. Make sure it has a really sturdy pail. And then, of course, what would happen if you stop over your head? You get wet. You get wet. You gotta love that. Remember, stay curious and keep experimenting. Imagine a tower so tall it went right up into space. And on the very top of that tower was a cannon. If the fired cannon pushed a cannonball fast enough, the ball would begin to fall around the planet in an orbit, still trying to go straight, but also being pulled toward the center of the Earth. That's just how our solar system works. Planets falling around the sun and moons falling around the planets. What fun. Keep experimenting. For more episodes online, visit WKAR.org. Production of Curious Crew is made possible in part by a grant from Michigan STEM Partnership.
providing strategic support for the effectiveness and sustainability of STEM education. By the Roland M. Gerstacker Foundation, celebrating over 50 years of giving to worthy causes that make communities strong and vibrant. Curious Crew is supported by TechSmith Corporation, a software company specializing in sharing knowledge visually through screen capture and screen recording. TechSmith products are used by teachers to create digital learning content and by students to demonstrate their knowledge digitally. Information is available at techsmith.com edu. By Fifth Third Bank, the Curious Bank, creating innovative solutions that can help improve the lives and well-being of our community. Information about Fifth Third Bank at 53.com. And by the John E. Fetzer Institute Fund of the Kalamazoo Community Foundation. Additional support is provided by Impression 5 Science Center, an interactive space for families to play, create, and challenge their understanding of science. And thanks to the following organizations and individuals for support of Curious Crew.